last place has seen better days. Yeah. God damn it, Jenkins. You had one job. Chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I hear you got G3. So, if you want a gun, you've come to the right place. Well, that's why I'm here. How much for that lovely G3? What? What the fuck? Out of your mind? I can get a better deal at the underworld, and that is full of sick ridden people. No, thank you, yes. good sir. I bid you a good day. Never with that. <laughs> and we're going to have a fuck problem. you. Still want a G3, though. How to get it without paying the 400 caps? How to get it? Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Later that night. I was just, uh, oh, hello there. Uh, I was just, uh, uh, I fell asleep, that's all, yeah, I fell asleep in here after hours, and, uh, you know, just, uh, don't mind me, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna leave, but I, uh, I, uh, forgot my wallet, yes, yes, that's it, I forgot my wallet. I'm just gonna pick up my wallet over here, and, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all it is, just, just going to get my wallet. See, officers, I just, uh, forgot my wallet over here, yeah, that's right, totally good. Oh, Step the hell back, or so hell my god, I will open fire! Don't get any closer! Don't get any closer! I mean it! I'll shoot! Get some! Oh god, 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 oh
So, uh, I just got back from the DC Wasteland, and, uh, well, let's just say I'm probably not going to be welcome back to anytime soon to, uh, a certain place. <clears throat> uh, let me get my, uh, expedition gear off, and, uh, I'll show you what I brought back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, the Godman's Airsofter who shoots up a uh, aircraft carrier during. Yeah. Uh, so I went to the Capital Wasteland not too while ago, and uh, let's just say I brought back something pretty awesome, and uh, may have done something that might uh, make me not so friendly with the authorities anymore. On a plus side, I don't think I gotta worry about the authorities coming after me after setting off a nuclear weapon since, well, apparently the, uh, the current virus outbreak kind of turned most of DC into a wasteland anyway. Kind of a up and down type deal, I guess. Either way, though, what did I bring back from the DC wasteland? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I brought back the best friend of any wastelander out there. The gun that is so reliable that any waster would choose it, be it raider, mutant, and or paramilitary organizations. And, of course, law enforcement. And it is an iconic Cold War rifle that is that's action actually led to the development of another very particular submachine gun that is so popular that you cannot have an FPS game without that particular SMG on there. It is so iconic, thankfully enough, that because of that SMG and because of the action itself made in the rifle itself, that in reality it's just the perfect German perfection. And much like I always say, is, it, is the Airsoft variant as good as the real steel? Well, in this case, we're looking at a product from China. And this particular product from China is replicating, of course, the H&K G3A3 battle rifle. You're probably wondering why I didn't say assault rifle. Well, because it's a battle rifle, number one. And number two, it's chamber in 308 762 NATO. I don't classify that as an assault rifle. I classify that as a battle rifle. But, before we can even get into the gun, which is currently inside the box itself, let's look at the box a second, because this is from our folks at JG and or Golden Eagle. And the box, I'll be honest, is really good. It's huge, it's big, and it kind of gives off this nice German look of, Oh, Hans, we don't need anything fancy, darling. We just want the simple, clean style right there. Yeah, yeah. Of course, because of copyright reasons, and of course, JG is JG, instead of calling it the HKG3A3, they call it the T3K3, which I'm very baffled by. But, oh uh, well, moving down, of course, we have a very small electric power, which, let me just bring it up for you guys so you guys can see it right there, right here. Electric power, full auto system. We have, of course, Metal Gear wheel box. English no good, and or grammar. Automatic electric gun series. Requires 1500 mAh, 8.4 volt battery. Okay. And then, moving over here, we have this lovely golden eagle symbol, which I would love to have as a patch. Seriously, that, that's kind of cool, because that eagle right there is wearing an officer's cap. That is awesome! Any other notoriety on the box itself, I do not see, because... Everything else is basically this. You have this big TK, uh, T3, K3 right there. You have that. You have this weird information of stuff right here. Moving over to the side, we have that. We have this. And once again, we have the gun right there in its lovely form. Not bad Photoshop, actually. I'm not going to lie. And what I really love is the... D and i got to love this. Right here. Data of the TK of the T3K3. I don't know why I'm calling it TK33. I, I don't get that. T3K3 electric air gun, bullet six millimeter BB bullets, 
Name, T3K3. Overall length, 100 and, or 1040 millimeter. Barrel length, 506 millimeter. Weight, 29, 2900 kilogram, uh, grams without battery. Magazine capacity, 500 rounds. FPS, 338 feet per second, used with 0.2 gram BB. I'm a little curious on that FPS claim, but we're going to find out about that. Anyway, opening up the box, which BT dubs, if you haven't seen the unboxing of it, they held this in place with some straps. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's very high tech. Either way, though, opening up the box. Setting down the box over there because I honestly don't want to damage the box. But speaking of the box itself, it is lovely. It's German in a sense that it is compartmentalized. You get, of course, this lovely little package. We will look here in a second. You have the... You move this over, you have the bat. you have this box, which we'll look at in a second. You have some styrofoam, which holds the gun in place, and I love that it actually is cut out specifically for that gun. I love that they put T3K3 in the foam itself. I don't know if you can see that well or not. Once again, the rear foam. And the unjamming rod, which is actually molded into the foam. I like that. I like it a lot. I, can, I just love compartmentalizing. I love it. If more companies will compartmentalize. Anyway, you have some 0.2 gram BBs, which I'm going to try and find out what these things are exactly, because there's approximately 200 rounds of these. We're going to find out if we can get more of these in the future, or if you guys can identify what type BBs these are, I would love to know. Over here, of course, in the box, is the battery. We will open that in a second. But before we do, just look at this. You could literally leave the gun in here and use this as a display. I love it. It's the rifle T3K3 automatic airsoft automatic electric gun series. I love this. I really do. This is a display. They are meaning for you to use this as a display. I really like this. I really like it a lot. Love it. Again, I love the compatibilization. Hey, let's get that box out. So before we even get to the small little box, or even the rifle itself, we have to take a look at the packaging, which comes in a Ziploc bag with no holes in it. Hallelujah! They're learning, or they have learned in the past. I don't know. I don't care. I'm loving it. Anyway, in the bag, you get... If I can pull it out... You get shooting targets. One, two, three of them. And they are six to ten, apparently. I like that. I like that scoring system. Although, I like our American targets a little better, but that's just me. Send them off to the side. Inside the big. We have a little loose item. What is a loose item? Ah, yes. Ah, no. Yes. Mm. Ah, you have a key. This is to use for your magazine and is actually a very good tool. Should you want to use that specific Allen? It is all polymer though, so fair warning, this might not work with all Allen screws. Putting that in my pocket. With a walk it. And then finally in the bag, the final thing is of course the instruction manual. Like pulling out a comic book, I love it. Is the TK is the T3 K1, K2, and K3 manual. Interesting, but it does show that this is the TK3. Uh, it, it actually, I like this. We're seeing some Bundeswehr, and uh, this may be actors they hired, but this looks to be Bundeswehr and this looks to be GSG9, or at least uh, some German police. And what I love about it is that the T3 is it shows the different types. We have this type, which is the T3K2 police uh, special, uh, special. What in the hell is that? Did someone not do their English right? F-P-R-C-E, I don't know if that's actually a term for it, but okay, type. And then, of course, we have the T3K3 military type. Even though, to my knowledge, into the history of the particular weapon in question, or at least the HK in general... Uh, yeah, anyway. Opening up, that does give you a lot of good information. I'm loving this. Let's see here. Do we have anything else? Let's see. Is there any pages I'm missing? No? Okay. Oh, it does show you a lot in there. It also shows you how to do it rear wired, front wired. This actually looks very nice. I do like that. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. 
very in-depth manual. I do like it. And I do love how they'll actually tell you how to work the diopter sight, how, they, how the magazine works, how the buttstock works, how everything else works. A uh, little bit of lubing instructions. Yes, I like that. Uh, let's see here. A little bit more how the hop-up works, how to do the charging handle, why you shouldn't overhop it, how to clean the gun, the motor area. And then finally, the full exploded view of the entire gun. I like this. I like this a lot. Gun manuals are a good thing. Don't throw them away. I know I won't. But, throwing this off to the side... We then get to the strange box. What is in the box? Why does it sound like something's moving in there? I want to know what's in the box. We shall open the box. And in the box, you get a battery, which will be a JG brick type 8.4 volt, and a smart charger. A simplistic, idiotic smart charger, which, if you recognize it, would be basically the same style that Elite Force sells. With a little light in there, so it tells you if it is fully charged enough for your small Tamiya, char uh, for your small Tamiya batteries. Throwing this back over to the box itself. We get to the gun! And the gun, ladies and gentlemen. The gun is simply wunderbar! I'm not gonna lie, I am a huge fan of HK's catalog of many weapons, be it experimental to some that just are way out there, and then of course, the classics. And this particular one is of course the HK G3A3. However, we all know it as simply the HK G3, the RK, the R91 from Fallout. And the granddaddy, the thing that created the most iconic, just greatest thing ever that HK could have put on this earth, and God bless HK. And that is this. The iconic HK slap, which would carry over to the 9mm SMG, the MP5. But before we can continue, let's just go down the gun itself. So, right up here, you see this big orange thing, which has PDW on it. I don't think that means anything, so let's move on from there. Right up here, you have the correct HK G3 style flash hider, which has the cutout for the grenade launching, which, yes, the HK G3 was technically set up so it could be a grenade launcher. If you want more information on that, please go watch Forgotten Weapons. I'm only going to spout fun facts, not actual full in-depth gun history. I'm going to talk about pop culture about the gun and all that good happy jazz. But the only real downside is that from there you have this, which would have been the bayonet lug, or at least the, where you could attach the German Bundeswehr bayonet. It's not there. Moving on from there, the entire body itself is made out of polymer, except for the barrel being metal, the tube being polymer, the handguards being polymer, which actually, well, the furniture itself is polymer because the G3A3 was polymer, except for the middle bit here with the buttstock. That's actually nice. You have the butt pad, which is rubberized. You have a sling point here and here set up so that way the gun can go over your shoulder easy or over your back. The gun itself is actually kind of hefty. It is a very big boy, but it is also a German boy. German guns are supposed to be heavy, weakling. Even though it's all polymer, it still has a good bit of weight to it. The, of course, fire selector is painted white, red, red, and it has safe, semi-automatic, and full auto. And you can actually see from there... Let me just see if I can get you guys. You can actually see the little indicator showing what you're on. And the best part is that unlike the HK-91 or certain Century G3s, this one comes with the Paddle Magazine release. However, it does have the button release right here in case you want to shoulder the gun and then just take your entire hand off this to basically do that and then reload the gun itself in the rock and lock fashion. I don't know why you would do that. Do like everyone else, grab that Paddle release. Aside from that, the HK G3A3 is just one of those guns that is just amazing. I love it. And before anyone asks, the threading on this bad boy is 14mm negative. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I will be getting a black flash hider for this thing because I want the proper flash hider for this. Not this polymer one. I won't even paint it black because, well, I'm fighting in the woods. There's nobody going to be able to spot this in heavy woodlands. Either way, though, the way you would remove this flash hider is you would remove the 
Allen screw there, and then just twist it counterclockwise. Uh, basically, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Unlike righty lo uh no, wait, it's lefty tighty, righty loosey. Basically counterclockwise, okay? Speaking of the clockwise, or at least something to go into it, it does still have the proper claw mount markings here and here, which you can see right there. So you can actually use HK claw mounts, be it the standard Picatinny rail, so you can run any sort of red dot on it or optic, what have you, or actually getting surplus HK iron, uh, HK optics, which, by the way, you can still find on eBay and you can actually find reproductions of, so I would recommend that if you want the proper HK experience when using this gun. Because I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy an HK G3 A3 with a Picatinny rail installed if I don't want to give that classic look of the crazy German optics that were designed for this thing. They're designed for that specific reason. But if you do not want an optic, do not worry, you have a front hooded uh, front post and a diopter sight which would, late, which would carry on to the HK MP5. And subsequently every other HK gun possible because, of course, the diopter sights work. It's German engineering. It is German perfection. And for anyone who thinks I'm praising this replica of perfect German weapon engineering too much, I present to you this clip. No, I'm not defending German technical superiority. I'm stating the fucking obvious. Now, for those of you who are probably screaming in the comments saying, saying the HKG3 is not reliable at all and they sh then you should go with an M4 instead, well, what the hell is wrong with you? Because, here's the thing, back in the 60s when this was around, this was actually a lot more reliable than the M16. Let that sink in. But then again, it is a German gun. Now, aside, of course, from the magazine, which, by the way, the magazine is full metal, it is the classic style of the Stenag style. You would fill the BBs up from here, you would twist it towards you down here, not frontwards, and it is a rock and lock style magazine, much like the F and FAL. Now, I hear my Southpaw friends saying, well, is it lefty-friendly? Well, yes. Be it right-handed or left-handed, the fire selector is large enough so that way you can actually, well, actuate it. The fire selector is polymer, so you might want to be careful with it, but the best part is that you have that loud click, indicating you put it into a certain fire selection. It is a bit of a pain to actually grab because of my small hand, so small hand users beware, but large hand users, well, you're going to actuate this fire selector pretty easy. But the way the pistol grip is designed, it is designed, let me see if you guys can see that, with these two humps right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but these two humps right here are designed away so that way it doesn't matter if you're holding this gun left-handed or right-handed, you'll be able to use it. And that's what I love about it, is that the Germans figured this shit out. They made the actual pistol grip somewhat ambidextrous with the way it was designed. And if you're let in with the large hump right here, literally right here, if you can see that, being designed so it's not intrusive, it's smooth, and you're going to be able to use it. It is very nice. I love it. And, of course, the magazine release being fully ambidextrous is also a nice touch also. Now, the only bad side is that, well... The fire, the, the iconic charging handle, is not fully ambidextrous. But do not worry, in the real steel world, there is, in fact, a company that makes a left-handed charging handle. Which, once again, I am very happy for, for most people. So you can, uh, so for you southpaws out there, you can actually have that iconic HK slap for your HK when you make it left-handed. Either way, though, speaking of which, pulling back the charging handle... Which, by the way, was a neat, was a nifty safety feature back in the day. Literally, you could just pull that back and reload it, or you could just, you know, rack it back. But then again, it's designed to be a slap. But pulling that back with the either metal or polymer, it's polymer, polymer dust cover, damn, mock bolt, you can see the rotary style hop up in there. And yes, rotary style hop up. So you'll be able to adjust the uh, hop up as you see fit. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, I have not adjusted the hop-up on this thing, so when the shooting tests come, you'll see the hop-up as is, out of the box. Now, oh, that's just too fun, it really is!
Mm, gotta love this gun. Now, if you're probably seeing this gun, you know it, then yes, you do. Be it from Fallout, or even Call of Duty, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, the HKG3 has made its staple known in all video games. Literally, all of them. It doesn't matter if you don't know HKs, you probably have seen the HK. You probably have seen the G3, you probably have seen its variants, be it the A1, the A2, the A3, or even the other variants of the gun, you know this gun. You do. And, of course, because I'm that guy, there was a variant of it in, of course, Counter-Strike 1.6. Shout out to anyone who's ever used one of them in HK, uh, one of the HKs in uh, Counter-Strike uh, 1.6. Sound off. Also, the uh, USP tactical. Good gun. Great gun. Either way, though. Aside from that, in terms of movies, you couldn't go anywhere in the 80s without seeing the HK G3. Be it from Escape from... Well, hell, the Escape series as a general, you can actually spot an HK G3. Be it Resident Evil, be it any other... Anything, really, you could spot an HK G3 in any movie from the 80s to literally nowadays. In modern movies, the HKG3, while the presence is still not as large as it was in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, you still can spot a G3. Even in post-apocalyptic movies, you can spot an HKG3. And for damn good reasons. The HKG3 is a great gun to have in the post-apocalyptia. It's not great for the mud, or maybe some heavy dust storms. But then again, in-range TV likes to go over the top when it comes to their gun torture test, so, uh, yeah, that's just how it is. Either way, though, what's the price tag on this bad boy? Well, back in the day, before 2012, you could pick up one of these things for $120. Nowadays, it's $140. Or, if you're lucky, you can grab it for maybe $130. If not, $135. It's a bit of a pricey gun, yes, and, uh... We'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's go ahead, head over to the shooting test, and see how this thing performs FPS-wise and distance test. Let's uh, see how she does, shall we? All right, so we have the JG G3A3 right here, and uh, we're going to load her up with some Black Ops 0.2 biodegradables, and we're going to run her through the chronograph. And uh, you can't have a J G you can't have a G three without doing the uh, iconic J G stuff. Which, by the way, yes, that is ironically enough how they would do it in Bad Company two. Still, it, it still gets me today. I swear to God, that entire game was basically one big airsoft game. But doing the iconic J uh, G three slap or the iconic H K slap as done by the G three, that is still fun as hell to do. It really is. Either way, though, let's go ahead and get the chrono right over it, put on some auto with the stock 8.4 uh, volt battery, more or less, that comes with. 289, 293, 188. So the joule count on this is 0 0.34 joules, but it's reading between one the 180s and... In... Yeah, okay, um... Okay! What? <laughs> um... What? Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to do two different types of uh, shooting tests. The first one we're going to do inside, and then the second one we're going to do outside. So, uh, yeah. Let's try that, shall we? All right, so we got some, we got the B catcher down that way. We're about what would be essentially CQB length for this gun. Uh, so this should be actually interesting to see how this does. I'm going to shoot from the kneeling position, or I might actually prop myself up way back here, actually. Yeah, you know what, that might be a better idea right there to prop myself way back up there, but either way, though, let's grab the magazine, put myself in a nice 
shooting position, a very comfortable uh, shooting position. Right about here. Lotus Magazine. Make sure she is nice and done. And of course, do the HK slap and get the run cam going. And let's see if we can't hit the little pop-up targets down that way, shall we? Alright. Semi-auto. Do know I am using the 8.4 volt still that it comes with, so we are going to try and hit those targets. Smallest one now, and this is going to be interesting to say the least. There we go. If you're curious about full auto, I am too. So let's uh, let's see what this thing sounds like on an 8.4 boat in full auto. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that fire selector is definitely uh, yeah. Huh. I'm gonna set up a. Uh, some e-bike targets and we're gonna see if we can actually knock those down now with this shall we really see how fast I can do on a trigger pull with the uh, with the 8.4 bolt alright the e-bike targets are set up out inside the BB catcher so this should be interesting to say the least wind this up a bit more semi-auto there we go Get myself nice and propped up and uh, see how she does. Whoop. Take her outside and see what she does at range, shall we? Oh, and uh, by the way, hop-up's not adjusted on this at all. This is factory reset hop-up, so uh, yeah, let's see how she does outside, shall we? All right, we're outside right now. We're going to see how this thing actually performs. Now, fair warning, not have adjusted the hop-up, so what you're going to see in terms of performance, that's what you're going to see, so we're going to see exact distance far enough when I actually do adjust the hop-up, but I do have targets set up right behind me. And through the run cam, of course, because marvel at technology, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing. So even though you see my back, you'll probably see a little screen off to the side seeing exactly what the camera sees. So, first off, while yes, in the FPS we saw earlier, yeah, wasn't exactly that great with the 8.4 volt, we have super manly tights in the living one lipo to actually see how it does. So, just like before, with this butt pad, which, God, I absolutely do not like how tight it is. But we'll fix that when we finally get some more furniture into it. So, grabbing the Titan 11 one lipo battery, we're going to stick it in there with the foam padding, which has decided to try and come off, which, as I stated before, I'm not a big fan of this. Yes, it does keep the battery from rattling inside your buttstock, but at the same time, I don't like how it feels like you're going to snap the wires off when you're going to pull it out. Again, it's a 50-50 type deal in the friction, but not my cup of tea, I guess you could say. There we go. And, plugging her up. Let's go ahead and feed the wires into the stock itself. Try and fold them in. Pop it up in there. Come on. Aha! Moving the barrel plug, which is standard for most JG guns. I haven't really seen these on the era brands, but I'm going to fire a few dry shots just to see if it's friendly with the battery, because it does recommend you use an 8.4 volt, although I don't really get why, but it's whatever. So, firing a few dry shots. Ooh! 
That's actually pretty snappy on the trigger response. I definitely do like that. Not as sluggish with the 8.4 volt as you would get, but then again, you are putting higher voltage through a gun with a full metal gearbox, so... Mm. Mm. Love that snappiness. Anyway. We'll be using 0.2 gram BBs out of the 500 metal high cap, which... There's a reason they call them maracas, or why we call them maracas. Either way, though. And once again, much like an AK, or really any other 7.62 style rifle, or really foul, since this is technically copying the foul. Again, I have to do a little bit more research on that, but yeah, I don't care. It's German engineering. So, lock and rock. And it wouldn't be an HK without the iconic HK slap. <clears throat> Love that. Once again, hop has not been adjusted, so let's see if I can actually hit the targets with the standard diopter sights and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit finicky myself, but uh, not everything from China is bad, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay, and see what we can get in the distance. Yeah, that's a pretty bad hop-up. That, that needs to be adjusted, which, once again, if I'm reading the manual correctly, that is the one thing I do not like about these hops, is that it is, needs to be lubed a little bit, but, now that we've got the hop-up adjusted, let's see what we're getting distance-wise. Not as good as I'd like it, but, uh, Again, there's a stock standard hop-up, and my god, the hop-up wheel is, it is tight. Like, no joke, the hop-up wheel is tight on this thing, so, try that again. My god, I gotta adjust the hop-up almost all the way down for point twos, that's, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that's definitely not a good sign. And the hop-up is literally all the way down. So, either I've got a lemon, or something has happened to the hop-up rubber to cause the BBs to not exactly reach the distance that it should. But, that's not really a big news when it comes to anything from JG. Or at least from what I've seen from the past products I've done of theirs. There it goes. Now that's some automatic. Now I have not run this thing in full auto because, to be honest, I'm a little scared to. But at the same time, the inner American in me is yelling at the top of his lungs, GO FULL AUTO! So why not? Aiming at the BB catcher down there, that is, I want to say roughly about yeah, 50 feet, give or take, so standard engagement distance for most any woodland game. Let's see what this thing does in full auto, and uh, with the run cam, might be a good show for you guys. That honestly did not sound good. It did not. But granted, JG Motors are not exactly the best on the market. So... If you're going to run it full auto, eh, a small burst might do, unless you want to run it in full auto, then I recommend you upgrade the motor in it, so that way it's not sounding like, best example I can give, is, uh, good lord, there's, there's one good example, but I can't think of it. Best way to describe it is what happens when you try to put a higher power motor, a higher power motor through a weed eater, I guess is the best way to describe it and the gears just don't match up. It, it's... Again, it, it sounds like gears are grinding. Like you're trying to change in a manual, but you're not exactly hitting the clutch good enough, and you get that grinding gear sound. 
Again, best way to describe it. And the butt area is hot. Okay, that's not a good sign. Or it might be. In terms of distance from what I could see and the hop of actually picking up, finally, which, again, much like with anything, folks, you gotta break it in before it can actually do good for you. In terms of distance, I'm definitely seeing at least 115, 120, which is sort of the standard of most JG guns. Uh, again, you probably see it better through the run cam, since, you know, that is what it's designed for, but in terms of actually how it all works, I'm a little bit impressed. In terms of a level 1 LiPo, I had my concessions, I had my concerns, I was definitely concerned that it would not run very good on the LiPo, but it is a full metal gearbox, so my concerns were unwarranted. But at the same time, I'm still a little concerned. Hmm. Aside from that, Why don't I go ahead and get back to the studio, and we'll give our final thoughts on this, because I'll be honest, I'm definitely, I'm starting to see a conclusion that we're going to get to, because, well, for a JG, honestly not that bad, but you have to wait till I give my final thoughts inside. So, let's get out of the very humid, very hot Tennessee weather, and uh, get back into the air till the studio. Shall we? Yes, mine beauty, you will be the beauty of the ball, yes. They will know your greatness. Huh? I mean, <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, you saw the shooting test, you saw how that is, and yes, while the camera wasn't exactly showing it as good, the, the maximum distance I was able to get out of this in the outdoor test was more or less about 120 feet, which is sort of a standard for a lot of, eight, for a lot of JG guns. However, the best thing about that is, uh, at least the best thing about this, is that you can upgrade this, and for anyone who's asking, who's constantly asking me, you know, what would be the good upgrades to actually get this, Type 4 inner barrel, flat hop, done. No joke, I'm going to be popping a type wire barrel in this thing, a flat hop, and, if possible, wood parts. Like, I'm seriously going to get a wood grip, wood stock, slap it on this bad boy, and basically go from there. Now, aside from that, what gripes do I have with it? Much as I do praise the HKG3A3, or really the, G, the HKG3s in general, JG for some reason decided to go ahead and copy the exact Tokyo Marie clone of it. And while, yes, many of you will bring up that Asian laws, import or export, basically say that only a minimum of parts need to be meddled, I'm still a little upset the fact that it's all polymer. And the only parts being metal are the barrel and the trigger and the gearbox and this little bit right here connecting the buttstock to the actual body itself and the magazine. And that's about it, really. I'm a little saddened by that. I really am. And I'll be honest, I don't like it. I really don't. For $140, you should at least give us a full metal HKG-3. I mean, thankfully enough, LCT from Taiwan, the Republic of China, actually give has given us full metal HKG-3s. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, they are good. They really are. They even have a full wood variant, a full wood furniture variant, which you can bet I want. I want bad. Give me, please. Either way, though, while I did talk about that, and yes, so yes, I do have some issues with the gun itself. Where are my primary issues? A couple after this one's going to be nitpicks, but my main issue has to be with the gun's build and the price tag. For $120, I can understand giving us a semi-metal, semi-polymer gun, or a metal barrel polymer body gun, but I don't agree with the idea that for $140, we should get the same damn thing. For $140, at least give us a metal bodied gun. I'll, I'll go, I'll basically say, yeah, okay, you know, we can get the tube right here, you know, you know, we're, I'm okay with the polymer tube for the gas system. Uh, I'm okay with, you know, maybe sticking with a few things here and there being polymer, but at least give us a metal body. 
That's all I'm asking, just a metal body, that's it. Either way, though, the other issue I have is with the buttstock itself and how you get to the battery. You have to literally push down on that to hear a loud click, and that's how you would get to the battery. I mean, okay, that's a good thing, but at the same time, it's kind of a pain in the ass part. The other thing is inside the buttstock, because if you look, that's another thing, a gun might easily break. If you look in there, you can see the padding that holds the battery in place. Now, I'm not a big fan of that, nor do I like that. Well, okay, it, like I said, it's a nitpick, but when sticking a battery in there and then pulling it back out by the wires themselves, I had an issue to think that I was going to snap the wires. I don't like that, nor do I think it's a good thing. I really don't. It's... Like I said, it's a nitpick, but at the same time, it's like one of those legitimate fears. I mean, yes, you can remove the padding, which is what I might actually do. I don't know. But at the same time, it's just slap dashed in there. It's not exactly good padding. It's just slapped in there to basically try and do something, I guess. <coughs> one of those things, I guess. But the butt pad, I'm not going to lie, is actually pretty interestingly designed. It's designed to be basically omnidirectional, be it up this way, down that way. It's designed so that way, if you go to put this thing back into place, it's not going to be, you know, bad either way. But to lock into place, you got to smack the hell out of it to actually get locked into place. My only other issue with the gun itself has to be with the magazine itself, because... When I went to lock it, when I pulled it out of there, there's this little white line on the actual hook itself. And the white line has not brightened or what have you, but at the same time, I'm still afraid that this is going to snap at any moment and it's going to basically break off. That's, my only, that's, that's more of a small issue, but you know, it's just one of those things. Don't worry, I'm going to be getting mid-caps for this. I'm going to be getting uh, different brand mid-caps just to see what does what, but uh, this will feed all manner of G3 uh, magazines. So if you go with the small one, like the small, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think of the uh, sniper variant of the HK. Basically, the PSR, SLR? Basically, the sniper HK G3. The one that has the small magazine, essentially, made for police and counterterrorism. Then, you know, it'll work in there as well as every other one, you can actually get the drum mag if you want to turn this into an HK-21 or an HK-11. Again, it's one of those things of, it's a, it's a good gun. It really is. It's, it's not that heavy compared to the LCT full metal variant, which, I again, I'm wanting. I want to get. And more or less, it's just... Best word I can say, quoting Todd Howard, it just works. That's literally all I can say. It just works. And once again, if I can, I'm going to get full wood furniture on this so that way I can actually have my R91. Because Fallout. Fallout. Fallout! Either way, though. I'm procrastinating. I know I'm procrastinating. But at the same time, it, 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 my brain's kind of torn on the score to give this. Because it's a good gun, yes. The hop-up's a bit of a mess, but once you break it in, it probably works very well. The polymer body just throws me off, and just... Uh, the other decisions for this, especially the price tag, is what really, really just does not... It doesn't click very well in my brain. I mean, the diopter sight works just fine. It, it doesn't really hinder that much of it. Uh, I really wish the front sight post here wasn't polymer and was actually metal. Uh, again, just one of those things that my brain's trying to rack around with. The only other big issue I guess I could have with it is just they could have done more. They really could have. They could have done more with it. And they could have gave you a metal flash hider to go along with this for the price tag. Or at least painted a metal flash hider orange. You were doing that with your M16s, JG. Why change your mind with the HKG3s? Why would you give us a polymer flash hider if not a painted orange flash hider? Or at least... You know, just a metal flash hire paint orange. You get what I'm saying, G3. You get what I'm saying, JG. Also, something I thought was cute. I didn't mention early on. That. This right here. It's, it's kind of a cute decal. It really is. That That's cute. That is a cute decal with the serial number and all. Either way, though.
I know I procrastinated, and I am sorry for procrastinating, but once again, it's just one of those things of... I cannot give this gun a perfect rating. I really can't. For the price tag it is, the build quality, and the fact that if you drop this thing, it might very well snap in half. That's just... I guess that kind of comes with the territory when you're copying a Tokyo Maria and you do it pretty badly, because that's what this thing is. And while, yes, it works great on a level 1 LiPo, and thank God it does... It's one of those things of you might have to go ahead and upgrade the motor to get a little bit better response out of it. Because with an 8.4 volt, it doesn't do that well. It really doesn't. But then again, personal opinion, you know, trigger response, what have you. I want the gun to actually be able to shoot as fast as I can pull my trigger. I'm not doing a speed gun. Just basically want it to react like an actual gun. But, either way. Without the bayonet attachment. Without any sort of the stuff that makes this thing lovely in a very good G3. Even though it is a good G3 copy, it's, it's it's not the best. The final score for the JG G3A3, the R91, the Wastelander's Companion, the Wanda, it is no more, no less, than a 9 out of 10. It's a must-own. For anyone who wants a G3A3 in their collection, or at least wants, doesn't want to shell the money out for an LCT yet, and you want to get into getting a G3 into Airsoft, or at least want to buy a G3 in Airsoft, then the JG G3A3 is a good staple for it, and has many great things about it, and once again can be upgraded to do basically whatever you want. It's a battle rifle. It is meant to basically do whatever you need it to do. I mean, literally, it's a battle rifle. Just saying. Battle rifle. 762, 308. Just saying, you know? Either way, though. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al. And if you want to help support or even sponsor another review like this one was by you, the PayPal contributors, then would you kindly consider donating to our PayPal down below? It's folks like you that actually make us, will give us the ability to be able to review guns like this. And would you kindly consider liking, subscribing, disliking, and or hitting the notification bell? YouTube judges the video on its engagement, so it doesn't matter if you leave a negative comment or a positive comment or even a dislike or a like. As long as YouTube sees the video as being interacted, then we'll still be seen. And it's thanks to you guys who do that, and thank you haters who absolutely have no fucking clue how the YouTube system works. So, thank you for that. And, a little uh, PSA. If you're going out to the wasteland or venturing out into your out of your house, your bunker, your vault, or even your fallout shelter during this pandemic as this video is going on. Take a G3. Trust me. It'll help you out. Oh, and if some guy tries charging you 400 caps for it, punch him square in the face or make it look like that person's gun fell off a truck. Oh, and don't shoot at law enforcement in an aircraft carrier. I'm just saying, you know, it just uh, doesn't work well. Either way, though, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, the common man's airsofter who reviews awesome German guns. So you can get them. Literally, that's all I can tell you. Go get it. I'm not I'm not going to tell you this ain't worth it. It's, it's definitely worth it. Go get it. Go get a G3. Go get a G3. Anyway. If you'll excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a wasteland to explore. Or at least see how long it's going to take before uh, the folks up in D.C. Uh, kind of cool off on uh, what I did. I wonder if I can nuke them. Yeah. Till next time.